There's loads of occasions. Come on. Yeah, no, no. I can do it. It's fine. It's, come on, baby. Where outside noises can be a real oh, distraction. Good girl. What's that? Today, I'm going to talk to you about noise cancelling. I'm Tim, and this is Learn TV. The principles of noise cancelling have been around since the 1950s. Originally developed for use around military aircraft where noise is a serious problem, in the late 1970s they started to also be in regular use by commercial aircraft crews. It's actually only been in the past decade that regular consumers have been able to purchase noise cancelling headphones to enhance their portable audio entertainment. There are two main methods of cancelling or reducing extraneous noise. Passive and active. A passive noise reduction is what a good pair of earmuffs or earplugs will give you. They block outside sound using a combination of sound dampening materials and tight fitting design. Fitted over ear or in ear headphones like these popular Sony Fontopia models work using the same principle. So they block the transmission of sound to your ear and in many cases these systems work pretty well. The main problem with passive methods of noise cancelling is that while they're very effective at blocking out high frequencies, a crying baby for example, they're not quite as effective with lower frequencies, such as the continuous rumble of a jet aircraft. Now, most active noise cancelling headphones actually use a lot of the same principles as the passive noise reduction designs. But where they differ is that they, in addition to that, have some clever electronics designed specifically to eliminate noise and most importantly to eliminate the noise that you find in those lower frequencies. To help you understand this you're going to need a brief physics lesson. Sound is created when molecules in the air are compressed by an object's movement whether that's a speaker moving back and forth or the spinning fan turbine on a jet engine. Provided these movements or vibrations occur at a frequency or speed that fit into our range of hearing, then we can pick them up as sound. The conventional way of measuring these vibrations is as waves, created using the frequency of the compression, that is its pitch, so whether it's bass or treble, and its force or amplitude, basically its loudness. Now, obviously the louder the sound, the harder it is to cancel out. But if you've ever had neighbours who like to party into the night with their stereo cranked up, you'll know it can be particularly difficult to block out low frequency sounds. You close all your windows and curtains, but that dull thud thud of the bass travels right through your walls. Now both high and low frequency sound travel at the same speed and reduce by the same percentage of energy when travelling through the same material. For example, the air between your speakers and your ears. But where low frequencies differ is that low frequency waves initially transfer less energy than high frequency ones. Now this means that bass frequencies suffer a proportionately lower reduction in volume over a given distance. Now that probably all seems quite technical. So what does it mean for noise cancelling? Well, it's relatively easy to block high frequency sounds with the right sound dampening. If you have sound dampening material that reduces 10% of the energy in a sound wave, it's going to have more relative impact on those energetic high frequency sounds, but low frequency bass sounds need some additional work to reduce them by the same proportion. It also explains why most manufacturers have encouraged you to think noise cancelling headphones are only really designed for use on aeroplanes. Because of the different characteristics of different frequencies, it's actually made their job easier if they only have to worry about reducing the sound of those particular air travel frequencies. We'll come back to that a little bit later on. So, how does the active noise cancelling actually work then? Well, it relies on the principle of something called phase cancellation. It's quite easy to demonstrate using Sony's Acid Pro audio editing software. This is a sound wave. For the sake of this demonstration, I've chosen a simple one, a sine wave. Phase cancelling occurs on a sound wave when an identical wave is played back 
out of phase with the original wave, essentially turning the second wave upside down so that its peaks and troughs are exactly opposed to the original wave. I'll duplicate this wave and then invert it. So this is the sound of the first wave, and this is the sound of the second wave. But if I play them together, this is what it sounds like. The more complex the sound, the more difficult it is to absolutely eliminate it. Traditional active noise cancelling headphones use a fairly simple processor which records ambient noise with tiny microphones, usually placed in the earpieces of the headphones. It then plays the sound back out of phase in the headphones. This newly created sound wave is mixed with any audio you are listening to in your headphones and it effectively cancels out the ambient sound, leaving your audio largely intact. They work well with constant sounds like the roar of a jet engine, but not quite so well with changing sounds like background music or talking. Which brings me to a typical office environment, where most noise cancellation headphones just don't work that well. And this is because conventional analog noise cancellation is designed to work with consistent background sounds, not the up and down, talking, various fans and air conditioning kind of sounds that you find in most offices. So Sony have developed a new technology called digital noise cancelling. It's completely different from ordinary analog noise cancellation in that it actually adapts to the type of sound in the background, which means that it works well with higher frequencies, lower frequencies and everything in between. Whether you're travelling on a train, on a bus, on an aeroplane, working in an office environment, mowing the lawns, it doesn't matter. Which uh, reminds me, I should actually be getting back to work. Thanks for watching Learn TV. We'll see you next time.